so we're doing intro to architect uh, standard stuff um do a bit of an overview of teams um you probably know you obviously know what teams is we're using teams to have this conversation so uh, but we'll go through it in a bit more detail um we'll look look at power apps and, and just a bit of an overview of the different power apps you can use um and then we'll do the I've called it like an integration workshop, but it's it's effectively using the Power Platform through Teams and just give you an, an idea of what you can do with the Power Platform in Teams. Uh, and then we'll answer any questions that you've got. But as I say, if, if you've got any questions throughout, just raise your hand on Teams and I'll be able to come to you and just have, um, I don't know, you can ask a question and then I can do my best to answer it. If I don't know uh, the answer, I will uh, I will defer, I'll take a note and I'll uh, go away and get the answer from my technical resources. Um, the guys that know far more about this stuff than I do um, and uh, we'll come back back um but yeah i'll come back to you via email and let you know um uh, the answer so just a uh, by way of introduction um so we've recently kind of redesigned i guess what we do uh, at icotech and refocused what we do in the next uh, couple of years um i guess really the bedrock is we use a consultative approach for every engagement so we we connect our customers with industry experts so whether it's in portfolio management power platform um, dynamics 365 or whatever it is we're doing we we have a bank of uh, experts in our community but both kind of full-time in architect but also uh, consultant resources is when when we need a, a specialist uh, capability um, and we really pride ourselves on having that consultative approach with all our customers um, we asked the customers what they liked about working with architect and, and that was one of the key things was our approach of the way in which we deliver through waves using deliverables and our commercial mechanism that goes alongside that as well is uh, one that's unique in, in the market um, but we're power platform specialists really so everything from power bi power automate power apps uh, canvas apps or the whole the whole nine yards really is power platform is everything that we do as, as a core at architect and um, we do we do do dynamics 365 as well um, but uh, they're more like the smaller niche projects in dynamics 365 um, that we do um, particularly in kind of crm or case management um, but yeah our core business function is really about power platform and allowing organizations to, to fully set this up and utilize this brilliant technology that's available to us all, which is pretty cool. Um, so what we do with that, we build applications, business applications for our customers. So uh, we have benefits management systems, project management systems or lessons learned corporate risk logs you know the whole nine yards we, we get we, we've got a contract management opportunity at the moment we'll be looking at an organization public sector organization to look at to manage their contracts they've got you know, tons of spreadsheets and they're trying to digitize that and, and make that much more efficient uh, to avoid them spending hours and hours and hours a month producing a shared load of kind of reports in pivot tables which is really not not useful so so just to give you an idea of kind of what we do the range of what we do we are specialists we kind of we specialize in power in in in, in project portfolio management just because my background is project portfolio management so we have a few customers that we deal with that we work with that we we're quite that's a niche offering i guess is that we we could deliver project portfolio management systems in the power platform all right um so just a client base so we're really proud to work with some really um yeah, kind of large organizations here in the uk um and some really important ones as well so defra ons base uh, you know uh, acas and, and everybody else is on that screen um but yeah we're, our client base is growing rapidly at the moment um but we're, we're kind of we tend to focus in on, on public sector it tends to be our 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 kind of niche i guess uh, in, in in the market that we're, we we operate in at the moment um particularly in the power platform um so Microsoft Teams. We all know what Microsoft Teams is on, on the outset because, of, of course, we're on it today and we're using it to have this conversation, which is great. But five years ago, launched in 2017, it's one of the leading applications for communication and collaboration. So, um, God, I've forgotten the other name of the other product. What's it called? Zoom? Is it Zoom? Heck, that's, 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 I generally can't remember what that's called. Uh, I think it's Zoom. Um, yeah, uh, so there's a couple of other products on the market, of course. Um, God, I was really embarrassed if I got that wrong. Um, so yeah, the, and, but Teams is prevalent in, across the business community that I work in or we work in uh, and have done. Uh, just it's kind of obviously it, 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 it's in 365. You get it as part of that service um, and it comes with all the security. Um, and it just it's a brilliant tool. I think you can we all agree you know, it's something we probably use every day and we can see the development of it and, and Microsoft are leading that development and, and I've done that actively since uh, the COVID-19 pandemic as well. Um, so uh, yeah I think um, it, it's a great tool for collaboration and um, it, the kind of hybrid supports hybrid working which is which is brilliant. Um, I always was, was kind of told by contacts colleagues that Teams was this kind of a frame 
this 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 kind of photo frame, I guess, of you coming into work and opening up Teams, and then accessing all your content, all your work content is through 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 the Teams window, um, and that's still prevalent today. Um, I don't know how far they'll push that with you know the next version of Windows, obviously Windows 11 and all those other services as well. But um, yeah, the, the the vision, one of the visions for for Teams was that you could effectively open it up, and that was the only application you'd ever have to open on your desktop when coming to work in the morning. Not really true in my case. Some, I, I still like to work on PowerPoint or or kind of you know Edge outside of Teams. But you'll see on the left hand side of the navigation as we go through this, the work, the walk through, the step through, that you can you know you're adding more content into Teams um, as every month goes by, which is really great. So you know on that then you've got the the webinars, meetings. We we can do webinars on Teams as we do today. <laughs> uh, meetings, team meetings, hybrid meetings. You know some people are at home, some people are in the office. As that kind of image shows there on the screen. Um, We've got Teams compatible devices now, so we've got Teams rooms, Teams phones. Um, you can even use Teams as a, as a walkie-talkie now. So there's a the walkie-talkie mode. Is it walkie? Yeah, walkie-talkie mode in Teams. You can uh, download that now, and it's a push-to-talk service on your phone. So as you're walking around a warehouse in, you know, a big warehouse, you can push to talk and, and and join a channel, so an actual you know channel 12 or channel 15. Um, service which is actually a really cool little uh, kind of gimmick as well i guess uh, for smaller businesses but but really important for for major businesses that are doing you know large kind of scale operational services so phones teams phones so architect everything we do on, it's on teams so you know we don't have mobile phones you know we have we don't have landlines you know the you ring the architect front of house number but it comes through through teams and a um and a kind of um a, a phone option system which you goes through and we can forward those calls onto individuals across the business as well um and then obviously the collaborative apps so word um kind of powerpoint um all those services are now in teams as well uh, and of course as we're talking about today power apps plus uh, the other items in the power platform uh, are also readily available with microsoft teams now which is great um so yeah the integration that we're going to talk about today um we started off with with kind of i guess uh, power apps particularly uh, and the walkthrough does talk about power apps first uh, but we go on to talk about Power Automate, as in the the, the flow. It used to be called Flow, is now called Power Automate. Uh, and also in the kind of walk through, step through, there's a, a virtual agent section as well. Um, so yeah, I think um, you can try all three of them. License, uh, kind of um, make sure you've got the right licenses, and you're able to do so in your organisation as well. But um, you know, definitely, it's not it's not inherently difficult. And the idea is, it says at the bottom of the screen there, the low code, no code, kind of graphical user interface. And in theory, the idea is that there are no training is required to, to utilise these tools and technologies. But the more complex your requirement, the more development, the more training you need, and the more you know, kind of experts like like architect you would need to go and to go and do that in the right way. Um, because there are many ways of doing these things wrong, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so you want know, to do it time and time again, you just get better at it and, and, and find those loopholes and, and, and fix it. So yeah, Power Apps, so we can bring all the kind of applications uh, that you find in native Power Apps into Teams, uh, and it brings it into that window, which is nice. Uh, Power Automate, you, you, you kind of desk booking application or something like that, you want to send a notification to Teams to say, have you arrived for the day, which is what we have here at Architect, which, which is quite cool. Um, have virtual agents so using a chat bot to say you know can i help you with this if you want to go speak to the hr team or the finance team or you know uh, kind of facility management team i'd like to you know request uh, information on room availability or whatever it might be um you can use virtual agents to, to to do that and have an automated response back to you uh, before before navigating you to a human to go and answer the question um which is which is all quite exciting technology that we can utilize um, so the Power Apps overview. So apologies for those of you who know what Power Apps are, <laughs> uh, but I'll just kind of I just want to make sure we're on the same page really with what the Power Apps are. So one of the diagrams I, I didn't include in this is the the Power Platform is con, you know made up of Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, the, the data visualization tool, and Virtual Agent. So Power Apps is one of the four components really. Um, but I guess it's a, it's a suite of apps within Power Apps, so uh, you can connect to services, uh, you know, other data platforms, and it allows you to do rapid application development. All right, so in 365, you can go to make.powerapps.com, hit enter, log in with a 365 service, and you can build a set of applications in that environment. 
So, you know, it, it's the modern version of Access. I came across an Access database the other day and I thought, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just the modern version of Microsoft Access. Um, but you could connect it with SharePoint lists, Excel. If you've got lots of data in Excel, you want to just visualize it or use that as a reference table, you could do it in Excel. Uh, Office 365 more broadly, so Word and all those other services. And Dynamics 365, of course, is in, is in that kind of ecosystem on something called the Dataverse. Um, uh, and you can actually connect it to an SQL server as well. Um, I'll come on to the other types of connection methods a bit later on. But effectively, they're allowing you to um, use, I guess, the rich business logic and workflow capabilities. Um, and, and as it says, they're transforming your manual processes to digital processes and automating those. So the idea is that when you go into a, a business function or an area that's doing a business process using Excel or a SharePoint list, and perhaps it's kind of cumbersome, it takes them a long time to go and get the reports out, or it takes them a, you know, a long time to go and you know, get from the record from one state to the other, um, then Power Platform is really um, a really good tool to consider whilst uh, while trying to improve that process as well and, and, and realize some efficiencies in doing so. Um, and if you're in a public sector as well, by the way, just the license cost for, for, for power apps is, is really, really um, kind of uh, competitive. Uh, so you, you, it's, a, it's a really kind of attractive proposition. Um, yeah, to, especially if in a large public sector organization, the, the license fees are quite, quite attractive. Um, but yeah, I, th I think they, they, they are responsive uh, and they do run seamlessly on tablets, on mobiles and on um, uh, the browser, uh, but they're predominantly meant for, designed for internal use, really. They're meant for the use of a business operational team within you know, a large organisation uh, and they're meant to allow you to build these business applications, which is uh, add value to sizing these systems and these processes. So there are, so within the Power App space, now there are three types of Power Apps. So there's a Canvas app, a portal, and a model-driven app. Uh, so start on the left there, so Canvas app. So that is, it, it shows it as a, as a mobile phone or a tablet, but you can use it on a browser. You can embed it into a SharePoint page if you want to. You, you can embed it into Teams, of course, as we'll come, come on to show you later on. But um, a Canvas app is a free form factor. So it's like starting off with a like a blank canvas, hence the name. So you can, you know, drag and drop fields into that and you can change the user interface to your specific requirements. So if somebody wants a big red button at the top of the screen, you could put a big red button at the top of the screen. You know, if somebody wants um, you know, some imagery with some toggles, et cetera, you could do that, uh, which, which is which is cool. Uh, the portal, so that in the middle there, so the I changed this a different color because it is designed primarily for external facing services. So it's an external facing website, you can hang off your website. Uh, and you could configure that really to look however you want, but you sign into that website through some great authentication methods like LinkedIn, Facebook, obviously 365. But you know, general population can can log on to that portal, you know, register for an account, sign in with their LinkedIn credentials, and then access a portal that you're servicing, surfacing to them. Um, and that data then is kept, is connected or stored in the data first, which is in your you know connected to your Canvas app or your model driven app or your Dynamics 365 environment. So you know, it's a really great opportunity to share content with uh, your external users, but also your internal internal users as well. Um, you know, think of it like a website, effectively, you know, as it says, external face and website, uh, and that's where, where I, we use portals is that in, in that space. Model driven app, this is, seems to be the most popular at the moment for iCotech anyway, um, it, it, the use cases we're working with, but it's a spreadsheet, it's a, uh, you know, it's a list in, in, in trying to digitize that, that, that system and process records through stages and capture information about records like for example benefits so a benefit is in stage one two or three and you'd capture the information about that benefits and linking um and, and looking up other data uh, kind of uh, look up values in, in different tables uh, it's a systematic form factor so it's like dynamics 365 if you've ever used it it's got navigation on the left hand side you've got buttons along the ribbon along the top and you've got you know a forms with tabs and then a business process flow the little bullseye things across the middle um, which are i think we've got an example coming up actually um, but this is you can't make the button in the middle big and red you know you have to kind of conform really to the standard structure of the model driven app um, but you, you know you can do certain things to it, and you can embed Canvas apps into a model driven app in certain cases in pages and forms, etc., to 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 bring it to life and make it look, um, you know, as uh, as as best as it can 
look, but it's about managing hundreds and thousands of records in views. Um, so that's why it takes that form factor really. Cool. Uh, so just a quick uh, example, one one per one per type of app. So Canvas app, you can see here, you know, it, it's this image. We like this because it shows that it can render for a phone, it can render for a tablet, but it can also render for a website as well or, or a desktop application. You don't have to, you know, some people think the Canvas app is just for mobile, and it's not. Um, you can you can do a lot more with it. Um, but you can, as it says there, it's much more intuitive. Uh, you can you can design the workflow of the application. Uh, you, you've got freedom, and as I said earlier, it's a blank canvas, and it's you know, a high degree of creativity and individuality. Um, the, the challenge with that, though, is they can look horrendous if we do them really bad. <laughs> so yeah, if, you know, I've seen some canvas apps, you think, whoa, <laughs> it just doesn't look as visually or aesthetically pleasing. So no matter what it does, you're going to prevent you turn off the user straight away if it doesn't look nice on your phone or, or something like that. So it's about getting the aesthetics right of the application in the canvas app. That's really important. Model driven apps. Um, so I should change these around. Sorry, but uh, the model driven app is. Um, uh, yeah, this modular approach, systematic approach. You can see here, this is a record. Um, oh, my pointer, my, my pointer work curse. Here we go. Um, so th this is a record that effectively, you know, you're going, you're going through stages, the bullseye processes, and in the stage two, you have to do these five things. In stage three, you have to do these seven things, and so on and so forth. Um, that little square on the left hand side here. Um, can I use my pointer? Here we go. A little square on the left hand side here. That is actually on a mobile phone. So a model driven app, confusingly, can also be used on a, on a mobile phone. Um, but it just it just squeezes it and and, and kind of condenses uh, the, the kind of real estate on that on that screen. Um, but but it's still in that form factor. It's still fixed. You can't change a lot on the aesthetics of the user interface. Uh, but also you've got charts here, so you could bring some pie charts in, some visuals, and you can bring Power BI into it now as well if you wanted to. Um, again, all built with no code, low code. It's, it's, you know, it's low code in, in reality, uh, but it's using that uh, that technology in the Power Platform. Um, portals. So as you, as you see here, this is a, a website. So you've got effectively, you know, kind of drop downs up here. You can change all the, the CSS. God, that's outside my comfort zone, but I was talking about portals the other day and with the, the guys here. And yeah, you can make the look and feel of this match your, your website and your aesthetics. And there are actually um, portals in place now that are used across uh, public sector services that we would all consume on a, on a monthly or, or yearly basis. Uh, and you, you know, you're, you're doing, you're using a, a website that's that's not that's built on the front end of power platform to go and fill out a form or process an application for whatever it might be interestingly again <laughs> portals can be used on tablets and mobile phones uh, but you know they're, they're, they're predominantly designed with a website user mentality in mind um, so you, you could go to the, the portal for your organization and and you know you can do that on a tablet or mobile phone but it's, it's hitting a website effectively um, Cool, and, and you can connect then data into the portal from the dataverse, right? So you can have, you know, all your contacts or your your invoices if you're invoicing someone, or your projects if there's a third party and you're managing projects internally. You can then give portals, you build a portal, and say, here goes subcontractor. You log onto this and you'll see all your projects that you're assigned to as a team member, and then they can add content to that project, like you know the risk log or budgets or plans or schedules or whatever it may be. All right. Um, the last thing we just wanted to kind of cover off here is the, the, the data flows. So data flows is a really cool little bit of technology that I personally, yeah, kind of like this. Um, this is all about bringing data into Power Platform uh, or the or the dataverse, um, and that's doing that in a in a in a controlled way. So, for example, you can connect to you know your finance applications like Zero or Sage, and you're running kind of batch refreshes overnight and and storing that data in tables in dataverse. So, you know if you've got contacts in Zero every night, that refresh is running and it's storing those data that. That, that data in the tables in the dataverse, which you're able then to look up and do do stuff with in, in the in the future. So if you're using dynamics for kind of customer engagement, like you're tracking your 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 kind of customers or your CRM, uh, but you've got a, a third party or non Microsoft um, 
application service running your finance packages, for example, you could connect those two together using data flows. Brilliant thing is that it's kind of you could time it, so you could do it eight times a day, twelve times a day, or you could do it once a day, overnight, or once a week, or once a month, whatever you have to do. And then you're using Power BI and Power Automate to connect to that data in Dataverse, as opposed to sometimes Power BI could get horrendously slow if you've got like you know multiple connectors, one to zero, one to you know. Excel and one to SharePoint list, it can slow down um, and take longer to refresh. Uh, data flows allows you to bring all that together. OK, hopefully that was useful. As I said, if you've got any questions, please do uh, raise your hand, use the raise your hand function on Teams um, and then I can I can come to you if you've got any questions at all. All right, so demo, we've got strong word. I probably should have changed that word. Her demo to, to, to walk through. So I just want to take you through adding some of this content into a Microsoft uh, uh, Teams Teams channel. So uh, bear with me a minute. I just want to come back. Here we go. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so again, the, the 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 new way of doing this is to kind of uh, to step through this and to walk you through this. It's got some narrative on the screen as well. But um, my intention is that you this is going to be recorded, obviously, and put onto uh, YouTube as we do with all our videos. So uh, the idea is you can stop this and you won't have to listen to me talk you through it. Um, and you can hopefully make more use out of it. But um, effectively, this is Power Apps. This is Power Apps within a demo team environment. OK, so this is um, being able to uh, see all the all the recent apps on the top of the screen here uh, that are needed uh, and you can add different apps into your into your organization as well. All right, so um, you can you can see here that I'm just going to step up here. We're going to scroll up and there's the employee ideas app is the app that's there already. Uh, you can see it was modified 28 minutes ago by and it's owned by Megan um, and it's connected to the Mark 8 project team. I hate that demo name. We need to change that Mark 8 project team. What a weird, what a weird uh, project name. OK, so for the operational team uh, uses a template already built for collecting employee ideas. So employee ideas, by the way, if you just hit your team's channel now, that's the three dots on the left hand side and search for employee ideas. It's just a, a free app that's already there, a template app, which, as it says on the tin, allows all your employees across your organization to submit ideas, which is pretty cool. All right, so um, in this example, they'll begin here customizing the app to capture the feedback and specific information they'll need from uh, from their employees. So as I said, you know, if you want to count so employee satisfaction or or whatever it might be. All right, so we're going to go into that little demo, that little existing app that was, that was already there. Again, you can add it. Just go to the three dots on the left hand side you can see on the screen and select employee. Um, employee ideas. All right. So um, again, in this application, now you've opened up the app. Uh, you can you could change the look and feel. Uh, you could change the back end data. Uh, the data is stored in Dataverse for Teams. OK, um, so uh, again, it's that baseline cloud hosted, you know, set of tables that you can use to go and build applications in the Power App. All right. So we went there to the three dots, the, the kind of three squares, I don't know what you call that, the three squares icon on the left hand side, but this is where you're building up the, the, the composition tree of the application. All right, so this is the campaign summary screen that's being flashed on the screen at the moment, um, and you're able to go into this screen and it just shows you uh, the screen in the in the section there um, and how the screen looks. Of course, this is a template application, so it'll look like this, but it, depending on what your application is, you might be starting off with a with a blank canvas. The other thing to note, this is a canvas driven application as well, so um, that's why it looks more free form as opposed to a model driven app or a portal driven app. So the flashing icon there is the media icon. So that of course, that's where you, you would upload all your components, so all your icons, all your imagery, uh, all your GIFs and all those kind of things you upload into this section. Uh, the Consorto logo on the left hand side, the bottom left hand side there is being flat, is flashing and it's effectively a logo that was uploaded previously. It's probably already there in that library if you, if you go in there. Um, in your live environment, you know, it might not be, but effectively it's, you could just upload your logo into that space. So this is a drag and drop that into the, the canvas. All right, and then we could click on the logo and we can reposition that logo. On the right hand side, you've got all those parameters. You've got this padding, uh, the border size, the press colors, uh, all those kind of things. Um, the image position, transparency, you can have all those kind of visual, um, yeah, visual kind of settings of the component, the media component that you're dragging into that field. All right, so in this case, we've resized the shape um, and it just made it look a bit nicer. Um, is, yeah, I guess uh, to the right 
is the image formatting toolbar yeah on the right i just explained that so you can see the flashing icon then we're going to change the color of this image so this is a, a kind of a, a white image with no no background as you can see so we're going to change this to blue now um and it, hey ho hey presto looks lovely uh bizarre in reality to get your, your kind of images looking nice like that but you, you get the gist you go in here add your 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 kind of your your PNG file, your image, and then you could probably put another, you're gonna put another box over the top of that and bring it to front, all those kind of things you could do in the, in this space. All right, so we've gone over to the data now. So we're looking at the data that's in the dataverse. And on the left hand side here, you've got the uh, employee ideas, and that's the, the data that the employees idea app is using. And uh, you can click those three dots, ellipsis or three dots and normal term and you can edit the data so directly in this app now we're going into the table called employee ideas all right so this is a table if you're used to using databases or even sharepoint you'll you recognize the idea of a column uh, and the kind of different fields so you've got the channel id in the middle there uh, you've got the kind of the rows so these are the records in the table um, and then you've got the kind of title uh, you've got the kind of campaign it relates to in the middle there uh, description over description of that row uh, and then you've got the icon the reference to the icon on the right hand side there all right so um, this employee idea is called when to mask up interesting okay the, <laughs> the back end data source is, is low code as it says there uh, much like the app itself the data is similar to working with uh, an excel table or sharepoint list yeah so effectively we're going to click on this here and we're going to select one of the, one of the drop downs what this uh, idea what campaign this idea relates to all right and then we're going to close close that so hopefully the idea is that you can Go and do this yourself. So if you watch this back in a couple of days' time, you can literally just step through this and follow follow this guide through, um, and start you know adding uh, different different kind of customizing this this uh, this application within Teams. So you, the idea of publish is, is still here from from SharePoint really, I guess, and and it's it's, it's it's embedded in the Power Platform technology, which is you know you've got a version of the application you've created and you want to publish that. So old school, we just talked about that as back end and front end, you know, kind of live or or testing, you know, testing and live or pre-production or prod, whatever you kind of call it. But it's the idea is to be able to edit and make changes to the system, um, test that in, in, in your kind of environment before you're effectively publishing it to the end users. Um, so we can click next now and we're, we're publishing this application to um, you know, the, the channel um, or, or to the team environment that we're in. All right, so we're going to click save and close. <clears throat> And then uh, we're going to go and see, uh, go to Teams on the left hand side. So within Teams, it says Teams. Long. <laughs> uh, then here is uh, the application that's been published. All right. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's all about collecting. Uh, in this example, it's all about collecting employee feedback. And you can see that image at the top of the screen there that looks quite nice. Um, just fast track, it looks quite nice there, the image in the screen. So, yeah. So that, that's the idea. They're in the general channel here. Uh, you can see they're in the general channel uh, underneath the Mark 8 project team. And that's now published that app. So for everybody that's got a, a kind of permissions, can go in here, click employee ideas and start adding content to this um, to this uh, application itself. All right. And then you can see here, you have the when to mask up is the idea, one of the, one of the role we added earlier. OK. Um, I want to talk about virtual agents. So. Um, I, I just think that virtual agents is not really prevalent, especially because our customer base, but just the customer base at the moment is just starting to get used to kind of power apps and power automate. Uh, power BI is obviously really prevalent in the market, but virtual agents is, is, is getting there. Um, but effectively, the operations team at Consorto can create chatbots using power virtual agents to answer questions um, posed by other employees or team members using a guided no code graphical experience. So similar to what I said earlier, um, this is about asking a question and having a, a bot uh, tell you where to go or refer you to a bit of content or answer that question for you directly. All right, so if you go to apps on the bottom left hand side of Teams, you type in Power Virtual Agents, uh, you can actually bring in, just install the application or open it in your Teams environment. So here you just got to click the open button and that'll install in your Microsoft Teams environment. Hopefully you're, um, you have permissions to do that, of course, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, if you don't know, 
suggest contacting someone in your IT department before trying. Um, but yeah, this is about kind of creating a chatbot yourself. So if you're a team manager, you, you kind of run a service, a lot of people ask you lots of questions all the time, <laughs> and you want to avoid that. Um, it provides limitless scenarios to help uh, fulfill any business objective. Oh, strong statement here. Uh, the operations team or consultant will need to have create a, uh, a chatbot to enhance the remote employee onboarding experience. Right, so it's just a simple example just to bring it to life for you. Okay, so you click the start now. Um, again, th the idea of this is is not to be a coder or a developer. Anybody in the business can, in theory, do this with a good knowledge of your know, project uh, or Microsoft Office 365. Right, so uh, it's a couple of minutes, but they can start from picking the team that they will that they will be owning. That will, sorry, that will be owning and managing the bots so team members can um, see and use the bot to share it with uh, with with their organization right with people in their organization so you've got to select the team which is going to be used and again again in this example mark eight project team all right so we've created the chat bot for the team um, and then we're going to go and it's going to bring that template or that the engine to be able to create the chat bot itself so in this case we're going to go and give it a name um, and it's the onboarding bot in this example. Um, takes a few minutes to go and to go and get through the process. Um, in in this example, you can you could either do your your, your own kind of chat bot from scratch, or you can go to topics um, and you can just almost take like a, a, a template. Yeah. So uh, the operations team can create new topics from scratch, generic topics, or suggestions from existing FAQ documentation, um, or modify existing existing system topics all right so we're going to go to topics and in this example we're going to create a new topic so the new topic on the top left there um so purchasing supplies um so as it says the kind of i guess it's triggering so tr uh, triggering f phrases or keywords uh, that the users like to type in i guess the hardest part of our chatbots is actually getting that trigger name correct and getting that that input um the phrases accurate because you know it, you know if you try to do, doing that and try and work out how how many ways a human can ask a question you, you'll get a lot of answers but effectively working from home in this example working remotely purchasing supplies office supplies purchase uh, form so those are words if the word is mentioned um in a chat then the the the, the virtual agent will pick that word up and and, and go forward right um so go to the authorizing can uh, canvas so this is if you've used power automate you'll recognize this structure it's uh, you know using the same logic of power automate to take you through a decision tree so we can add elements to the conversation flow or decision tree um using dynamic node options to fill out logic right so uh, of the just use a few job downs basically it makes sense when it comes to so it sounds like you want to know more about purchasing su supplies is that correct so somebody has an asked some a question used some of those phrases like purchasing supplies um help or office supplies and the chatbot is now going to come back and say okay sounds like you want to know more about purchasing supplies is this correct um the option counter option for the user is a multiple choice uh, and you could you're able to add your multiple choices in here as well so if you it's yes no thanks or i I'd, if i was me i'd probably say speak to human <laughs> as a third option this you know just get me straight back to the human because uh, sometimes obviously if you go around the circles you just want out um so yeah uh but here you're adding conditions um so in order for the uh for them to have a bot uh, ask questions and get responses from the user uh, they can select to add a node and ask a question to add a new question to the node all right so you can you can kind of layer on layer that in in process so click ask a question uh, to add to, to a node a sequence of nodes will be added to other conditions to create additional uh, questions so you can get really complicated with this and you could go onwards and onwards and onwards so if that's a no um you know you, you work from home it's related to a corporate office you know you can you can map out that this is that conversation tree um and you could go as you go <laughs> pretty complicated in this space um and this is structuring that conversation um for t t in this example here okay so um i'm gonna go to my computer's frozen. Why is my computer frozen? Don't freeze on me. <laughs> uh, 
Oh God, sorry, saving. <laughs> I forgot this is a live actual, somebody doing this, so it takes a while to save. I had a panic then, I thought it was frozen on me, but no, it's just saving. Uh, Chatbots do take a while to publish um, and to, to actually save. So um, on the top right here, you've got that save and you can test the chatbot as well. Uh, and you can, it, it'll almost test it for you, make sure your logic is correct and you haven't got any holes in it. And you've got endings on each on each of these uh, kind of these positions, all right? Um, so I'm just gonna, I'll do it again. I'm gonna go back, redirect here. Sorry, bear with me. There we go, saving your dialogue. So dialogue successfully saved, um, and we're gonna add a new topic here. So click new topic, which is what it says, um, and you're adding, a, once they've added uh, a few more topics to help with onboarding, they could publish the bot. So that was one topic we went through there on the screen. And what it's just done there is just added more topics quite quickly, and uh, you know it's not very clear actually on reflection. But um, there's the purchasing supplies topic we talked about earlier, um, and then these are other topics like retirement questions, health insurance questions, pay and direct uh, deposit questions. Yeah, so vacation policies. So it's the whole um, you can you can you know, create as many of these topics um, as as you want for the one chatbot to respond to. So start off with one, do something simple, uh, kind of learn from that, get that tree working well, and then, and then add another topic on there and add another topic on there as well. Um, same concept with Power Apps, when we publish it, we, we come up, come through here and we publish the application itself in, into uh, the, the team channel itself. All right, um, there's some nuances around sharing the bot. So in this example, it says the bot will need approval from the team admin before it is shared to specific team uh, or organizations. Uh, once it is published, anyone can access it from the team app store. All right, so um, this is about kind of giving some governance to admins of 365 to um, you know approve a bot being published to their organization. Which, which is good, I guess. You don't want so many of these things going around that they're constantly doing things in the background. Uh, but this is me as a user in this case saying, yeah, add it to the team. Uh, I'm happy for it to be approved and, and published, uh, and I'm going forward with this now. All right. So here's it in live action. So it's the onboarding bot. So remember, the onboarding bot has multiple different topics. So it has like six or seven topics in that example. Um, uh, yeah, so by default, the chatbot will automatically start the conversation when a chat is opened with the bot. In this example, the team uh, will ask the bot about ordering office supplies. All right, so funny that the, 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 the example is the all, all the words that are used in that in that word capture. All right, so it sounds like you want to know more about purchasing supplies. Is that correct? That's the question that comes back. Uh, and the answer is yes. All right, so. Hey, great. So this is the next step in that decision tree. Do you need supplies for your corporate office or you're working from home office? And this is working uh, corporate office, sorry. Um, and there, there we go, it's pointing me to a, um, a form stored on SharePoint, which is added into that, de that kind of decomposition tree that, that process. Um, and then, as it says here, just like it's been programmed to do so, uh, the bot will ensure it's on the right track to help new employees that are onboarding remotely. So you can imagine over time, as you start adding your topics, start adding your decision trees, you know, get the broad concept of the chatbot and how it works. You know, you can you can start um, using them very very kind of pragmatically and, and effectively in an operating environment uh, to, you know, I guess, remove the amount of queries that go to HR or talent or onboarding. All right. Um, yeah, and then as we said earlier, we promoted, the, we published the, the chat bot, so now any team member can go to apps and they can go to, you know, built for consortium. This is an example. This might be built for Icotech or uh, whichever company you, you, uh, you need to you're working for. All right. So yeah, you can you can do you find all this kind of content online as well um, on the Microsoft website. So yeah, have fun, fin you know, getting getting to grips with that. Um, there's lots of user guides. Um, and, and yes, that's, 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 yeah. I guess that's for all these uh, little quick demos as well. I'm going to show you Power Automate. I'm going to try and whip through because um, I don't want to spend too much of your time and I hope it's kind of adding value. But uh, Power Automate, again, you can add that into, into your Teams area here and you can pin it to the left-hand side navigation bar. All right, so Power Automate, again, you can use in here to in Teams to create a new flow, use existing flows, start with a template. 
all right so um it's all about automating repetitive tasks all right and, and uh, creating new and managing existing automations or flows is easy within teams easy <laughs> it is easy but uh, it, 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 it could be complex if you've got a complex requirement all right so in this example we're going to create a new flow um, so we're going to get um, to look at the notifications category. So this is all about notification flows. Uh, you've got these flows that come up here, but of course you can go and create you know, from different templates. And there's hundreds and hundreds of these examples, right? So post a welcome message when a user joins a team. All right. So what we could do is is, is a simple um, template flow where a user joins a a team's team, and it will post a notification and welcome in that user to here. All right, so we're gonna, these are the connectors it uses. So these are the connectors it, that little flow that flow will um, generally use. Uh, and we're going to go and build this flow within Teams. So the idea at the start of the course, top, you know, kind of everything's within Teams. You, know, you could go to, I think it's flow.microsoft.com, confusing, uh, which would, you could do this within it. But the idea is you're allowing users to do this within Microsoft Teams itself. So we're going to select an item. Oh, sorry. To press the button. I don't know. Yeah. So market project team, uh, they're highlighted on the screen. Um, so this is about saying which team it's going to sit in. Microsoft Teams team. I've only just noticed that. That's, that's complex, isn't it? Um, and then the channel this sits within as well. All right. So obviously a team within Teams has channels, uh, and this is uh, going to be the announcement channel that we're going to use here. All right. So it contains multiple dynamic text fields for personalization. So, hey, Joel, you know, for example, rather than hey, first name or user. Um, additional steps can also be added to the workflow to leverage power automates more advanced features. All right. So you can you can do this by creating the flow. Um, and, and, and as it says there, we can we can go and edit that later on. All right. So the, the flow is in action now. So we've created that flow as simply as that. Um, and we're going to go into announcements and um, you know, the, the announcements, uh, the notification was successfully posted to the announcements channel. All right. So you can't see it in this example because it's hidden, but we're going to go to the announcements channel up here. All right. Uh, sorry, go back. Come on, demo. There we go. So the, the announcements channel. Here we go. So this is about getting a notification here saying the new star has joined the the organisation. It's a really simple flow in, the, in that demo, but um, it just shows you how you can bring Power Automate into into or modify Power Automate within Teams itself. The last but not least is Power Apps. So if you click on the three dots again, like Power Automate is in there, uh, but here you can click on Power Apps uh, and, and, and do that. All right, so I think I yeah, showed you this earlier, didn't do with the canvas. So uh, back at the start now. All right. Um, so that was kind of Power Apps, uh, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. Uh, editing and modifying all those within uh, Teams itself. Uh, very simple use cases in individual concept. Uh, but the idea is that hopefully you can watch that back on YouTube, just kind of pause it and step through the logic and start using the Power Platform within Microsoft Teams. Um, that's the that's the idea. Um, so I'm going to go back to my presentation, although there's not a lot left. Uh, is there any questions at all? Uh, if you've got any any questions, please feel free to raise your hands. I can answer any questions that I, that I can answer technically, um, or I can um, yeah move on to uh, uh, AOB. Um, no, okay, cool. Uh, so just. Yeah, any questions, let me know. If you've got any questions afterwards, feel free to email us at info at icotechservices.co.uk. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn or send me a message. More than happy to, to connect with the individuals and just answer any questions that you've got. Um, hopefully you've learned a bit about what the potential of Microsoft uh, Power Platform in Teams today. Uh, and hopefully the new way of kind of showing you, although not totally uh, without its fault, is uh, hopefully better for when you watch this stuff back and you can hopefully follow through uh, the steps that we that we went through there today on the call. So just um, next steps, Lauren will shout at me if I don't tell you about this. So um, I'm doing my bit. So yeah, data flows in Power BI. So I talked about data flows earlier on. Uh, we've got a webinar on the 23rd of March talking about that. And then project for the web. So uh, project for the web is, is back as a, a content for, for us. Um, something we're really passionate about. Bear in mind that we're kind of PPM specialists. So if you want to learn more about project for the web um, in a little bit of a workshop, and how we use it and what you can do with it, then feel free to join uh, that event on the 6th of April. 
Um, but with that, thank you very much for joining. I've been talking for 47 minutes straight, so I'm going to go and have a, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. But uh, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. If you've got any questions, please feel free to drop us a call or email us at info uh, at uh, Believe it or not, we're on Spotify. You can listen to us, our, our kind of uh, uh, events on Spotify. Uh, we're on YouTube as well. So if you want to subscribe to us on YouTube, we've just reached over 300 sub subscribers. So we're really proud of that. So well done, Lauren and the team. Um, but um, yeah, look, look to kind of increase that uh, uh, each month goes past. Uh, we're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, everything. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Uh, looks like there's no questions at the moment. So um, without with that, then I'll uh, we'll, we'll end the call there. Uh, as I say, hopefully you find it useful. Um, and uh, look forward to catching up on the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you.